Good morning and welcome to church. It is wonderful to be celebrating with you and worshipping God with you wherever you are at. I'm so glad that you have joined us for church today. The team have prepared an incredible worship set for you. I want to pray before we worship. So if you're comfortable, close your eyes, lift your hands. Um, Don't close your eyes if you're driving, but if you're at home, I just want you to just open your heart to the Spirit of God this morning. Father God, I thank you that you are with everybody right now. Lord, I thank you that you are aware of the hearts of every single person that is listening. I pray for your spirit to come right now, Jesus. I thank you that you are healing bodies, that you are bringing revelation and that as we glorify you this morning, we say you are a great God, that you would come and enter people's hearts in a brand new way, Lord. We give you all the glory and all the honour in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll see you after the worship. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it And it changes everything We sing with all we are We claim your victory We let it rise Let our praise arise hey. We'll see you break down every wall We'll watch the giants fall But we cannot survive Breakthroughs on our side Forever lift Him high With all creation cry God we praise You Whoa, We praise You Oh We praise You Faith be song that overcomes the raging sea Let faith be the song that calms the storm inside i 
praise you this morning, God. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Thank you that you seek us out. You're seeking us right now. But church this morning, why don't we just go after his heart? Let's go after more of his heart and get closer and closer.
Well, it's wonderful to be with you here and to be doing church a little bit differently today. You know, I've been really thinking about the story of Jesus, obviously. We've just had Christmas Day a couple of days ago and thinking about Mary being pregnant with Jesus. And I've had three babies, so I've had three pregnancies. I actually miscarried our first pregnancy. And I know what it's like, the the awareness of the pressure and the awesome responsibility of what it is to carry a baby. And think about the God's plan. The Savior of the world is coming, and yet He chooses a young girl to carry Jesus, the Son of God. Think about how Mary would have felt and the pressure she would have felt. I know the pressure I felt carrying our three kids and they weren't obviously um, the Son of God. And so I just know that carrying this treasure, this amazing treasure that Mary would have felt and this this feeling of being aware of her own fragility that she was even in that day and that society that young young women would have been considered the most fragile and yet that's just God that's God's plan for all of us Jesus came and came through Mary um, and through her humanness and yet in 2 Corinthians 4 that Paul talks about the treasure in which we carry, our salvation of Jesus, this light in which we carry, we carry around in clay pots. Um, Many different translations say earthen vessels, these human bodies that we carry and we are aware that they are fragile, they're not perfect, they're breaking down day by day for some of us more uh, quicker than others. And we're often trying to fix that that clay pot in which we carry. We're often focusing on it, trying to say, well, I want to make that stronger and I want to make that better. I want to appear like that is, it's perfect and it's all together. But actually, I love how Corinthians says that we are called to carry this precious treasure in these earthly weak vessels in which we are. It actually shows the amazingness and the awesomeness of God through our weakness. We have this juxtaposition the whole way through Corinthians where we've got the weakness of our humanness and the power of God coming through. Jesus is the light of the world and he came in that light in which we carry. If you have Jesus within you, you carry that treasure. It's incredible. It's actually something that we sometimes take for granted. I um I had this ring, not this ring, another ring. Um, That's a whole nother story why I don't have it, but that I inherited. And I thought it was just costume jewelry. I was told, oh, this is all just costume jewelry. It's not real. So I wore it around every day. And then one day I loved it, um, but I didn't think it was real. And an old jeweler grabbed my hand and he said, oh, that's a real opal. And I was like, oh, is it? And he said, that is worth a lot of money, like thousands of dollars. And I I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. I thought here I was walking around every day with this incredible treasure on my hand and totally unaware of its worth and its significance. And I think some of you at home are potentially like that. You're carrying this treasure, this salvation, and you're completely unaware of how valuable and important it is. And that you have actually been called to be the light of the world. And we're constantly trying to hide our humanness and hide our weakness, but it's actually in your weakness. He shows himself so strong. And so people know, well, that must be God. I feel like my life's calling message is that he's chosen the foolish of these things, foolish things of this world to confound the wise and that he has actually used the fact that I am imperfect and pretty foolish to show that God is amazing, that our ordinary lives actually show the miracle of God. And so may you as we're closing the door of 2020, which has been a really interesting year, and some of you may feel more fragile than ever, but may you be aware of the treasure in which you carry, the incredible, precious treasure that is salvation, that in your ordinary life, in your everyday ordinary life, that the miracle of salvation that you carry is called that can transform this world and I and turn this city on its head in a good way. 
God has called us not to be perfect, though we are being transformed day by day from glory to glory. The fact that we have Jesus in us is transforming us every day. This body in which I live in, Corinthians 5 says, will one day be folded up like a tent. That's how fragile it is. One day won't be here, but our our new body will be prepared for me, not by human hands, but by God himself. It's that eternal perspective. In in the Corinthian scripture that I read, uh, that I shared with you in 2 Corinthians 4, it goes on to say, though we are pressed on every side, though we face many trials and many tribulations, these things, uh, these presence troubles in which we face are actually small compared to the eternal perspective. And what we see right now, what we see will not last forever, but the things in which are unseen will last forever. And this treasure in which you carry is eternal, this eternal life and the eternal salvation. And maybe you today, you've joined and you've clicked on, you thought, I'm going to see what church is all about. I'm going to watch this live stream. Maybe a friend shared it with you and you thought, okay, what's this girl talking about on a, on a cliff? Maybe you're seeking truth. Maybe you're seeking peace. Maybe you're seeking happiness. Well, can I say the only light and peace and life in which is true that will last forever, that is found in Jesus. So may you today open your heart to Jesus and may you be aware of the eternal perspective in which he brings and that though this life we won't last forever, that this treasure in which we carry is eternal. I'm going to pray for you today. I really have an anticipation over the next couple of weeks, this holiday period, that some of you today, just the awareness and the revelation of the treasure in which you carry, how precious it is. And the cha- you know, the changes in which have happened this year, maybe you just think, ah, oh, you've lost focus of the treasure in which you carry. Let me pray for you today. Father God, I thank you for the salvation in which we have, this precious treasure that we carry. Lord, there's some people that are listening today and they've been so focused on, on their lives, their, their, their bodies that carry this treasure, that they've lost sight and focus of your eternal perspective. I pray for a, an outpouring of eternal perspective right now in people's lives, that they would be aware of the treasure in which they carry, that they would begin to step out. Some of you are going to lay hands on people this week and pray for them and they're going to be healed. Even in your brokenness, you are going to see miracles in the ordinary because the treasure in which you carry is the Spirit of God. It's the same power that raised Christ from the dead. And there's others of you and you've just tuned in by chance, by random, by invitation, and you're going to open your heart to that treasure. And Jesus is going to come and you're going to experience the salvation and the light of the world. And I encourage you, reach out to us as a church, be connected, click on one of the buttons as you're watching the live stream and let us know that you've decided to follow Jesus. We'd love to connect with you, have you be a part of the East Coast family. But my prayer is for you today that you would be aware that the precious treasure in which we carry, that is Jesus. And that Jesus is the light of the world, but you have been called to be the light of the world to be a city on the hill, to show the greatness of God, not through your perfectness, but actually it's through our weakness that He shines the strongest. God bless you. I can't wait to see you uh, in the flesh. If I haven't seen you at all this year, if you've been at home uh, and you've only been able to engage with us online, I pray that you would have a special blessing and anointing of the comfort and the Spirit of God. You are precious in God's eyes today. God bless you and ciao. Good morning and welcome to East Coast Online. It's great that you've joined us here this morning. This is the last online service for 2020, but it's not the last online service that we have coming up. On the 3rd of January, we are also online, but throughout January, we have lots of fun stuff coming up. On the 8th of January, we have the East Coast Youth 
summer day camp. We are going to Telford in the Royal National Park. We're going to be doing kayaking. We're going to be building catapults. We are going to be using the water slide and we're hoping for a great day there. You can go online to our website and see the information about that from there and register your child. So that's from junior youth and up. We have Two buses which are going to go from church, so transportation is all taken care of, and if there is anything that you need, please contact me. The other thing that we have coming up is great fun with our kids' church. They are going to be doing Ninja Warrior, and they're going to be having a Super Circus Sunday, and that is going to be great for summertime. So there is plenty going on within church coming up in January. How you can keep up to date with what is going on is using the QR code, which should be on your screen right now. If you use your camera on your phone to open up this QR code, you will see a link tree. On this link tree, you will see things like registration for church, registration for kids' church. You will also see things like I am new. You use all of these things there for finding out what is going on in the life of East Coast. That is it for today, and we'll see you online again next week, the 3rd of January.